Hello, this is Math 2231 coming to you from the College of DuPage during the summer of 2020, and this is the conclusion of the lecture entitled Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, FTC1. By way of introduction, let's uh, talk about a problem. So we can integrate from minus 2 to 0, 2t squared, square root of 1 minus 4t uh, cubed dt. And uh, doing this by substitution, we would let u equal 1 minus 4t cubed. du is then going to be minus 12t squared dt. And that means that t squared dt is minus 1 over 12 du. And so the substitution gives us this. But now we're at the evaluation step. This is after we've taken the antiderivative. And we have to now plug in the numbers. One way to do it is to reverse the substitution and put in what u is in terms of t and then substitute the t values in. And if you do the calculation here, that way you will get this and this. So that is your answer. Some students would say it is an ugly number, but there are no ugly numbers, just like there are no ugly babies. And so that is a fine answer, and that is the exact answer. But there's another way to do the problem, and that's to realize that you've already created a substitution. So instead of using the t values, we can use u values. And so we can say when t is equal to minus 2, the lower limit, we can plug into our substitution uh, the minus 2 for t, and we find that u is equal to 33. Similarly, when t is equal to 0, we can plug into our u substitution and find out that u is equal to 1. So this integral then is the same thing as this integral, same thing as this, but now our limits are u values. 1 is the top limit and 33 is the bottom limit. If we plug those in, we get exactly the same answer. So there are two ways to deal with this, but I'm going to tell you that 10 times out of 10, I'm going to deal with it with the bottom way. I don't really care what you do as long as you get the right answer, but here's what I'm telling you. If what you have here that you're plugging the numbers in is t's, these limits have to be t's. And if what you're plugging in the values into here are u's, your limits have to be u's. And in the examples that follow, I am going to exclusively do this because I think that's the best, most efficient way. So here are four problems for you to do. Um, you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, on this one, the substitution would be u is equal to 2w plus w squared. That means that um, du is 2 plus 2w, and that means that 1 plus w dw is 1 half of du. Again, I told you I would do this, so I'm going to change my uh, limits to be u's. So when w is minus 1, u is minus 1. That sometimes happens, not often. And when w is 5, I will get u is 35. So this becomes, the integral we started out with becomes, after you change variables that way, and you should check all those steps, is 1 half the integral from minus 1 to 35, u to the 5, du. So that's going to be u to the 6 over 6, and the 6 times 2 is 12. And you plug in and you get this uh, large number but that's the exact answer. Let's look at number B. Uh, the same substitution can work for both of these terms. It's going to be u is equal to 1 plus 2x. du is going to be 2dx, and dx is going to be 1 half du. Again, when x is minus 2, I plug in, and u is minus 3. When x is minus 6, u is minus 11. So then the integral this becomes one half the integral from the new limits minus 3 to minus 11 that is going to be 4u to the minus 3 minus 5 over u du we integrate both of those terms we get 
this and notice that the I'm using use this is you these are use so I substitute those values in you should check the arithmetic and this is what you get for an exact answer problem C is this one this was the original problem that we were um, uh, set up uh, to do and the first one is actually going to be very simple that's just e to the y dy uh, but we do have to do a change of variable here we're going to let u is equal to pi y du is pi dy dy is 1 over pi du and we're going to change the limits when y is 0 u is 0 and when y is 1 half u is pi over 2 so you see this integral, we'll leave this one alone, it's just the integral from 0 to 1 half e to the y uh, dy, but this one we will make that substitution, we'll be left with then 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of u du. So I do my uh, antiderivative here and my antiderivative here and I substitute in the values. So I get, um, at the end of the problem, e to the 1 half minus 1 plus 2 over pi. And I'm using the fact that the sine of 0 is equal to 0. Uh, the next problem was this one. Uh, we actually have two different substitutions we have to make, so we break it into two integrals. Here you're going to make a substitution of um, u is equal to z over 2. And here you're going to let v, I'll call it something different, equal pi minus z. So this is the u substitution. These are the new limits. For the second integral, these are the v substitutions. And these are the new limits. So this original problem becomes... 6, the integral from pi over 6 to 0 of sine u du, plus 5, the integral from 2 pi over 3 to pi cosine of v dv. All those are numbers that you know from uh, special triangles. You find the uh, antiderivative of the sine of u is negative cosine of u. We'll evaluate those points, and the um, antiderivative, or an antiderivative of cosine of uh, v is sine of v. We plug in the numbers, we do the simplification, and we get the square root of 3 over 2 minus 6. Now here's two more problems you should do. You know what to do. Let's see how we did. Well, you can't do this integral because the denominator is 0 at two spots, and both of those are in the interval of integration. The integrand is not continuous, and so the integral cannot be done. Now this one goes from 3 to 5, and neither one of those places where the denominator is 0 are there, so we can do this. We will use this substitution. u is 2 minus 8t squared. Uh, du is this, and t dt is minus 1 over 16 du, and we will adjust our limits. When t is 3, u is minus 70, and when t is 5, u is minus 198, so the integral is transformed to this. I integrate 1 over u, get the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u. And uh, notice I'm taking the absolute values, so those are, I turn them into positives. And uh, this is a correct final answer. You could write this different ways, but uh, we'll just leave it that way for now. And here are five more problems for you to do. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, here's the integral you were faced with at the beginning. And so what you're going to do is uh, you're going to uh, integrate that. U is this. DU is this. When x equals 0, U is 0. When x equal this, um, which was my upper limit, I substituted in, use properties of exponentials and logarithms and I get that this is minus pi. So this integral becomes, when I make that substitution, magic happens with this e to the x. I have minus the integral from 0 to minus pi of the cosine of u du, that is 
Now this minus sign is here, so this antiderivative uh, is sine of u. I plug in the numbers, and uh, both those are zero, so the answer to this one is zero. Okay, so here was the integral we had to start with. This is the substitution that we'll do. u is ln of t, du is 1 over t dt. Uh, when t is e squared, u is 2. When t is e to the 6th, u is 6. So this integral becomes the integral from 2 to 6, u to the 4th, du. Integrate that, it's 1 fifth u to the 5th. Plug in those numbers and I get this as my final answer. Uh, here was the problem we started with. And what we can do is let u equal 2 plus secant of 3p. That means du is equal to 3 secant 3p tangent 3p dp. And that means that um, secant 3p tangent 3p dp is 1 third of du. For the limits, when p is pi over 12, this is going to be 3 times p, so that's pi over 4. And when I plug that in, I get 2 plus root 2. I can take advantage of the fact that the secant's the reciprocal of cosine here if I want. And when p is equal to pi over 9, u is equal to 2 plus the secant of, uh, and that's 3 times pi over 9 is pi over 3, equal 4. Again, these are special triangle numbers that you should know without a calculator. So this integral becomes, after that substitution, the one-third factors through is the integral from the lower limit to the upper limit. Uh, this is du, and this is u to the minus one-third. I add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And uh, what I will get at the end of uh, all that is I will have uh, one-half u to the two-thirds and I have these numbers, and I plug them in, and this is my exact answer. Um, here is the initial problem. We're going to let u is equal to sine x, then du is cosine x dx. Notice that magic happens because the cosine x will uh, be absorbed, and I will get my limits to change. So when x is equal to pi over 2, u is 1, and when x is equal to minus pi, u is 0. So this integral becomes this upon substitution. This is the um, fundamental theorem of calculus. And the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of 1 is sine of 1 radian. And you can plug into your calculator to figure out what that is approximately. But it also, this is the exact answer. It is the sine of 1 radian. Uh, I think this is the last example. Here we're going to let u is equal to 2 over w, that means du is minus 2, w to the minus 2, dw, and so 1 over w squared dw is going to be minus 1 half du. The limits, when w is 2, u is 1. When w is 1 over 50, u is 100. Again, you should check these calculations. So this integral becomes minus 1 half, the integral from 100 to 1 e to the u du. The integral of e to the u is e to the u, and so I plug in these values and I get minus 1 half. This is going to be e to the 1, that's just a number minus e to the 100. Now, this is a very big uh, positive number at the end because e to the 100 is an enormous number, and you would leave it just that way. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. God bless you all.